Hello, welcome to my reading log for the month of October. This month I didn't have time to film individual clips, so we're going all at once. So this will be everything I read in the month. And I've been quite busy, as you could tell from my upload schedule, but I did read a good chunk of manga, which was nice. And first I want to talk about one of my favorite things I read this month, My Love Mix-Up. So last month I read Skip and Loafer and I had rave reviews, I loved it from the first volume, and this was kind of the same story. This was so funny, so cute, basically the premise is that there is kind of a misunderstanding and a sort of love triangle forms, but I don't want to spoil anything because there is kind of a plot twist at the end of this volume, much like Blue Flag. So yeah, I did hear reviews of this saying it was kind of like a more lighthearted Blue Flag, so if you liked Blue Flag but were not a fan of the more like serious in tone aspects, I would recommend this. Very funny, the art was gorgeous, it is by the same artist as my love story, so that's why some of the characters might look a little familiar in design. The main character looks like Suna from my love story, in my opinion, and I couldn't figure out why, but then when I looked up the artist, I was like, oh, yes, it is this artist. But yeah, I really enjoy this, highly recommend. There's also a drama coming out for this right now, so I think they timed the release of this to release at the same time as that. And I know that it is picking up some traction, so I'm glad that they released the manga as well. And I'm looking forward to the next volume. Next, I read volume 2 and 3 of The Daily Life of High School Boys. Now, this is one I was considering dropping because I have seen the anime, and the first volume was pretty much exactly the same as the anime, but this second volume really surprised me. I believe it's new content, or I just didn't remember it properly, but volume 2 is really good, and then volume 3 kind of dipped again. It's an episodic story where each chapter is like a little vignette, Sometimes there's like two or three chapters that are connected, but not often, so yeah. Very episodic, slice of life, comedy, story. I really like it, the art's okay, and I don't know what I should do because volume one was like a repeat of the anime, volume two was really good, volume three was okay, and I think there's seven volumes total, so I think I will pick up the rest of it since it's not too long, but for now my feelings are kind of mixed on this. And next, another one of my favorites for this month, I read all of Spirit Circles so volumes one through six, and this story was great. It's not something I would normally read. It's a fantasy story centered around reincarnation. And I sat down and binged this all in one day. Don't want to go too into the plot because there is spoilers involved if I do say some certain aspects. But highly enjoyed this. I think I would recommend this for you if you like a short fantasy adventure series. The ending wraps it up really nicely. This is a nice, short, succinct story that I highly recommend. And I know some of the volumes are pretty hard to get, but you can read this on the Crunchyroll manga app. That's what I had to do with volume 4, but I do own the rest of the series. So yeah, really nice. I know this is the same author as Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer, I think that's the title, which is a series that is out of print in English. But I may try to look for that because I really enjoyed this. I like the art, I like the story, the pacing, the ending, it all wrapped up well. I really like this, and I was pleasantly surprised by it, and it makes me want to try more kind of fantasy stories, since I was not really bothered at all by the fantasy aspects of this. And also, another surprising aspect, the romance in this story is a, like, enemies to lovers type thing, which is a trope that I highly dislike, but the way that they did it in this was really interesting due to the reincarnation aspect, so yeah, I won't spoil much more, but this was really good, I really liked it. And it changed my opinions, potentially, on some certain aspects of manga that I usually do not like. Next, let's talk about Yosakura Quartet. I read the first volume of this, and the only reason I have this is because it is by the artist who does the character design for Devarara, which is one of my favorite series. And this was just okay. It was honestly kind of bad, but the art is so gorgeous. It is basically about kind of like an agency of misfits trying to solve crimes in the city that are related to demons. So there is fantasy aspects, and I feel like it's kind of a ripoff of Gintama, if you know what that is. And I do have all the volumes that are printed in English, there's only five, but I think it goes up to volume 20 and ongoing in Japan right now, which is surprising, like this was so, just the most average series I could ever think of. It was not that great, not that interesting. I'll probably read the rest of what I have, I don't think I'll be continuing this digitally or anything like that, but it is nice to have this in my collection. Like I said, I love this artist a lot, so I'm not mad that I read this, but I was very underwhelmed. But something that did not underwhelm me, the Kasasan series, I read volumes 5 and 6, and this series continues to be great, very wholesome, very cute, kind of a bland vanilla romance between two girls in high school, and then the story continues on into when they are in college. And it's just very cute and fluffy, and the story is very simple, but I feel like you can inject your own interpretation to a lot of the things discussed in here, like, you can make it deep or not deep, depending on how you interpret things. 
but I think this is just good, mindless fun, cute, wholesome, girls, whatever. There is kind of a explicit scene at the end of this volume when they are already in college, so they are adults. So that didn't bother me at all. But yeah, really sweet, really cute romance. The drama is not that serious. It's resolved within the volume, which I like if there is drama in a series. But yeah, highly recommend. Can't wait for the next volume to come out. Apparently it's been delayed a couple times, but I am excited to read more. And the artist's art has really improved in these more recent volumes. If you've seen the first, second volume, you know what I mean. But yeah, really enjoyed this. Probably my favorite Girls Love series as of now. And then continuing on from my My Hero manga reading journey from last month, I did catch up totally in the physicals and then I caught up in the digital or like re-caught up because I am already caught up but I just read everything again. And needless to say, this current arc is amazing. If you found it hard to get through some of the earlier things, keep going if you want to. I promise it gets better. And it was just really fun to read these volumes in physical form because I never had before. And I'm actually going to see the movie in theaters after this. And hopefully that's good because I did see the first movie at Anime Expo when it premiered. So I have good memories associated with the My Hero movies, even if they're not canon. But yeah, really excited for this. I'll keep keeping up with the digital. And I don't think the next volume physically comes out until like January next year. So I don't know why the releases are being kind of slow. But regardless, love My Hero. And I'm always excited to keep going with it and read more, especially the arc that they're in now. Another popular title, Spy Family Volume 6. Nothing much to say. As always, whenever I read these, I'm pretty sure most people read this. This character on the cover is heavily featured. She's not my favorite, to be honest. But I like that she's kind of becoming a rival for yours feelings to develop. And Twilight doesn't know how to feel about that either. So it's interesting. There's a little development with the romance, which I was not expecting at all. I didn't think the parents would ever get together, but it looks like that might happen in the future, maybe. You know? You never know. But yeah. Lust by Family left off on kind of a cliffhanger this volume. I could just read it on Shonen Jump, but I do like to wait for the physicals on this one, and I don't know when the next volume is coming out. But I know Damien is on the cover. I've seen it in Kinokuniya. But yeah, love it. Lust by Family. Super popular. Pick it up if you haven't. Won't regret it. And then the piece de resistance, the creme de la creme. <laughs> Wotakoi, volume 5, technically volumes 9 and 10. And there's only one more volume to go with this. I'm sad but happy. At the same time, because I love this series so much, this volume had a lot of development for a certain couple. I won't say much more. And then kind of the finale for another certain couple. I felt like their two stories kind of wrapped up in this. And I hope that Hirotaka and Narumi are kind of resolved as well in the final volume. I think that's what the final volume is going to be reserved for. So yeah, it feels like two of the stories are kind of complete, resolved. I'm happy with the endings for them. And then I'm just excited to see what goes on in the last volume. I know a spinoff has been announced for this manga, but not really any details about what it is, who the characters are going to be that are focused on, etc. But like I said, love this volume. Read it immediately when I got it. Love it. Continue to love it. And I really want the next volume. I hope Kodansha doesn't delay it for like another year or does something weird. Like I really hope at least they put the variant cover on the inside, much like they did with this volume, which I won't show because it's a spoiler. But yeah, love Wutukoi, one of my favorite series. Highly recommend, of course. Next, I read volume one of my solo exchange diary, and this is a sequel to my lesbian experience with loneliness. And this volume kind of focuses on the author moving away from home and also dealing with the success of her previous manga, dealing with people in her life that did not know certain aspects of her. And since her first work was a very real, raw, exposed version of herself, how she's dealing with that, like I said, with people in her real life knowing all this stuff about her now. So it's pretty interesting. I do think the first work is much better, but I am excited to read more of this. There is another book, and then I think there is a sequel or a separate story about alcoholism in her life as well. So really interesting. She does write that she wants to do more of an original series instead of more autobiographies, but I feel like her life is kind of like a manga as well. So I think this format is good for now, but I would be willing to read some more original content from her. So yeah, I recommend this. Obviously, if you're of age and don't mind reading about some more serious topics. But I think this one was not as heavy as the first volume. That was definitely much harder to swallow while this one was more lighthearted and more relatable to more people, I feel like. Because it is about moving away from home for the first time, living on your own, adjusting to some type of success in your life, etc. And then lastly, I want to talk about Let Me Let Me Not volumes 2 through 4. Now, this one I might have a little bit of a controversial opinion on. I think it's very clear on my channel that I do not 
condone things like pedophilia and incest and I try really hard to warn people about potentially triggering things in the things I read because I know things that I might not be sensitive to other people might be and vice versa but yes I just wanted to make it very clear that this has some incest in it and it was hinted at from the first volume but I did not know how prevalent it would be in the series going forward so I decided to give some more volumes a chance and basically this is kind of like a love square situation very classic shoujo little bit of angst it's by Iyo Sakisaka who did Blue Spring Ride and Strobe Edge I have seen Blue Spring Ride the anime and I didn't like it that much but people had said that this is her best work so far but I'm not sure I'm conflicted I'm invested in the story but it's kind of like reading a trashy news article or watching like drama videos or something on YouTube I'm intrigued and I'm invested but I don't morally agree with some things in here and I want to see how it plays out. I'm going to read the rest of the volumes I have. I have up to volume 9. And then after that, I'll decide if it's okay. I mean, like I said, there is some incest aspects between step-siblings. One loves the other, but the other does not. And they're obviously supposed to suppress those feelings because they're living as siblings. But one of them acts on those feelings and it's very uncomfortable. I did not expect that when I turned the page. I like physically yelped. I was like, why? But anyways... Like I said, I'm just intrigued to keep reading. I'm not sure how I feel about this completely, but I will obviously update once I read more. But yeah, it's just very messy. And the only character that is not involved in the mess is this guy, and I appreciate him for that. But yeah, I feel like if the couple on this cover get together, it's kind of going to be bittersweet because of certain aspects. I might write in the description because I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't read this. But in the description, I will write my full thoughts about how this relationship may play out. But yeah, so sorry to end on kind of a negative note. I just wanted to kind of put this at the end in case people didn't want to hear my thoughts about this more controversial manga that I didn't think was going to be that controversial. It just really sucks when I read something and certain aspects that I don't like pop up kind of like in the middle of the series. But this manga did give a fair warning in the first volume, so I did continue at my own risk. It's my fault. But yeah, so I don't know. Things are changing, things are evolving, things are being resolved, but it's just weird vibes and some shocking aspects that I was not expecting to happen. But yeah, so like I said, sorry to end this on kind of a negative note, but I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Sorry for my lack of uploads lately. Work has been crazy. I've only had two days off this whole month and this is one of them, but I'm glad I was able to read a little bit of manga. Not as much as I usually do, but yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.